Notion is powerful enough to become the central nervous system for all of your work. Like the nervous system, Notion allows you to connect your ideas between branches. Let's talk about Notion databases today. It's one of the critical components towards accelerating your journey towards the perfect workflow. What I like about Notion is how it's built towards solving problems. It's not just another software. Let me show you more. What's up achievers? This is Murli. If you're new here, I'm here to help you improve your life using productivity tips and tools. If that's of interest to you, you're in the right place. Do me a quick favor and hit subscribe so that you don't miss other tips and tricks I bring your way. Before I start, I just wanted to reiterate that this is not a sponsored video. Whenever you mention the word database, one of the first things that comes to mind is say an Excel, a Google Sheet or numbers. This kind of database is flexible but fails to solve some problems. This is where Notion Databases steps in. Notion Databases can pretty much be applied to any page that you create once you get used to it. It can be created as a separate full page or in line with an existing page. You can also change this later after creating it by dragging the database in and out of the page. You can also visualize the database in many different ways with completely different styles, which we will see in this video. But before we get into that, let's start with the basics. In this video, we will look at demonstration, additional functions, and a few options that we often forget about. Simple use cases of Notion databases could be project trackers, execution boards, hiring sheets, a telephone directory for your department or for your home, a calendar, a dashboard, or team notes as examples. Today, I'll take a simple example of how you can save and organize content that you want to read or view later. This allows you to save articles, videos, or stories from any publication, page, or an app. I know there are other apps out there that do this, like Pocket, but they don't exactly integrate into your calendar or your workflow for doing more complex activities. Let's start by clicking on the new page option and then selecting a table for the database. Let's name the page as read it later. To spice things up a little bit, let's add an icon to this now. To explain what the page stands for, we'll also add a description, things that resonate with me. Now let's introduce the following columns, name, topic, the URL or the link, a date, and a completed checkbox. We'll use this date to create a read by date so that we can keep ourselves real. Just notice a little more detail in the table. Let's go into the topic, for example. There's something called the property type. You can configure the property type as multi-select. Select a text, a number, a date. You can attach a file. You can tag it to a person in case you have teams. You can add a checkbox. Keep it as plain text or a number. Add an email a phone number, which can be handy if you're creating a phone directory or tag a project to an individual. Notion works with the browser, with iOS, with Android, with Mac, with Windows, and also works offline. Now let's populate the database. Let's say you're interested in productivity topics and you came across this great article on Inc, on Flipboard, on your iPad. You can also populate the whole row by typing in you could also save your YouTube video from your iPhone, say straight into Notion as well. If you didn't add a description, you could do the same on your desktop later. The same applies to other articles or posts that you can enter either using a URL link or just by copying and pasting something into the page. Let me quickly populate some other entries. Now let's populate the topic and the date to get this completed. Now let's spice this up a little bit, right? And add some views. Let's add a calendar view and a topic board view. We'll also rename the views to make it a little more personalized. So you can see with just a few clicks, the entire perspective of the database has changed completely. So there you have your first database created. Congratulations. Remember that you can move the cards around in the board view easily. Most of us have projects running in our lives. If it's personal, it could say be a remodel of your kitchen. It could be a school project. It could be an office project or it could be related to your business. In my case as a creator, I'm constantly searching for new YouTube projects. And each video of mine represents a project. Let's bake that in into the created database, shall we? 
So we're now looking at the table view and create two columns, YouTube and justification. In the YouTube column, we could populate a yes, a no, a maybe, or a don't know yet. And the justification is just a few lines on why I think that way. Now using these two columns, let's aim to fill up all this information, shall we? Okay, now that we have all the columns filled up, let's quickly create a view to look at YouTube videos as a snapshot shall we? So now you can see how easy it is to actually create this view. The good thing about these views is that the views get refreshed as you add items into the rows. Notice here that the group by is topic for the topic board and if you click on that you can change the way the item is grouped. I've simply created different views so that I can go between views depending on the dashboard that I'm seeking to look out for. As you can see the whole thing is pretty flexible and bends according to your needs. In the demonstration, we created a database from scratch. What you can do is to take advantage of existing databases within Notion and suitably modify them if the template is around what you're looking for. If you go to the full template gallery, you can see all the other templates that you would not have downloaded. You can duplicate any of them to use that instance in Notion. As a frequent multitasker, I often refer to other pages in Notion while I'm working on something else. This is quite an easy thing to do, to open multiple windows in Notion. All you need to do is to click on the other link while holding down the control or the command button, depending, of course, on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. You can also add reminders to date events with the end date and time. The table also allows you to search. Say, for example, you're searching for the word virus. It will quickly filter it to the read it later items. For more complicated views and filters, you can also do this using the filter menu. The way to access it is from these three dots. Similarly, within a filter, you can also sort these to see things easier. You can save the filter and the sort in another view option if you keep accessing it regularly. A few options we often forget about. If you go to the top of the page, you will notice that you can lock the database to prevent accidental edits. This is while creating and editing the data inside. If you work on this database on a daily basis, then of course you can add to favorites. If you work on a project page, you can also add that specific project page to favorites. If you use copy link, then you can use this page as a link from another notion page. If you want to share this table with another person in a PDF format, you can also do this from here. You can also move this page from a separate page to an inline one here. Did you have a specific question to databases that you wanted answered? Comment below. I just wanted to remind you guys that there is a giveaway as a subscriber. Consider looking at the latest Notability video linked above. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.